Hey everyone, welcome back to Dom Analysis on Mindplex. This is your host, Malfunction, and today we're analyzing arguably the class with the most difficulty and most potential, Mage. Being the only class with mana in the game, Mage is regularly limited to how many skills it can use and how many fights it can take. This is one of the reasons Mage sees very few players maining the class. Due to its weaker armor and mana limitations, Mage has become one of the most difficult classes in Dom to master. However, when used correctly, Mage can become an excellent addition to a team's lineup. Let's jump into the pros and cons to see what this class can do. Number 1. Mage has the highest potential in the game. Mage has an arsenal of skills that can counter enemies flawlessly. Consider Blizzard. While you might only hear Blizzard as the butt of a joke in a pub game, Blizzard can entirely counteract a Brute Seismic Slam if activated at just the right time. Number 2. Mage is versatile. Unlike the other classes, Mage has got loads of potential. You can cram a lot of functionality into one build, which makes it useful for a lot of different encounters. Many of these skills can be used differently, and it allows for a very mechanic usage of the class. The second style is the Duelist. During a game, Duelists play a role similar to Assassins, where the goal is to take out key targets on the enemy's team, like Rangers and Assassins. Duelists tend to avoid heavies because of their difficulty in winning 1v1s. Number 3. Mage can be played very differently from person to person. As mentioned before, mage play styles are diverse and can be grouped into three styles depending on a player's preference. The first is tank, and this is the most straightforward style. It gives you the option to take in most of the damage while letting your teammates take all the kills. As a tank, you're dictating the fight, and most of the time you're probably initiating it. Positioning is really important to make sure that you're the one taking in all the damage while letting your teammates take the kill. The third style is Support. Support mages blend the best of tanks and duelists. They have the health to deal with a lot of hits, and they have the mobility to escape from fights. Support mages often rely on their sword and axe skills to win them the fight, instead of just straight up PvP. The strongest support skill a mage has right now is Arctic Armor. Not only does it keep you alive longer, but it also helps your teammates out too. The cons are 1. Mana management is difficult. Mage is the only class in the game with a resource like mana. Successful mages are constantly analyzing whether it's worth it or not to activate a skill. Activating a skill at the wrong time limits your ability to use the rest of your skills, so choose wisely. A mage is also competing with a knight and brute's high usefulness in a game. If you play mage, you need to make sure that you're as valuable as a knight or a brute to your team. Number 2. Strong Mental Game Unlike other classes, Mages have to look at a game through a different lens. A mistake that mages make can strongly influence the fight or even the entire game. Mages have to know when and how to zone, when and how to pressure, and when and how to stall for teammates and gems. Number 3. Know your weaknesses. Mage is all about picking your fights. You don't want to fight a tank with low mana, just as much as you don't want to fight an assassin that has silencing arrow. You can only provide value to your team if you're fulfilling your purpose, which makes Mage one of the hardest classes to compete against Knight and Brute with. Sometimes your opponents don't take Mage seriously, and that's where you're the most dangerous. 4. Mages are weak. If you're trading hits with a Knight or a Brute, you're probably going to lose. You also need to be careful around Rangers and their fast-traveling projectiles, as well as Assassins and their high mobility. These are challenges that successful mages face on a per-game basis. Now let's talk about some builds. Mage is unique in that no skill is necessarily bad. Every player enjoys using their own skills depending on their personal playstyle, so here we're going to point out some of the most famous builds that mages use. The first build is all about being a tank. Inferno 5, 
Void 3, No Blade 2, and Mana Regen 2. Inferno 5 brings that heavy pressure against your opponent, and No Blade lets you earn that mana back while you're spending it during the fight. A great tactic is to block hit with Inferno and Null Blade to do maximum damage with your skills. The second build is all about being a support. Inferno 1, Fissure 4, Void 3, Magma Blade 2, and Mana Regen 2. Inferno 1 still gives you that same power as Inferno 5, just at a shorter range and a higher cost. That means you need to get up close and personal with your opponent, but that's great if you're block hitting with Inferno and Magma Blade. If you need to, splinter off from the fight with Fissure. Our third build is not as popular as the first two, but it focuses on the Duelist playstyle. Rupture 5, Fire Blast 1, Immolate, Null Blade 1, and Breakfall 3. Rupture is very important, as it can be used for mobility and to set up combos. It's recommended to use Fire Blast as a tool for mobility in this build. However, feel free to use it for long range disruption. Immolate packages Fire Blast and Rupture into a great trifecta for combos. The issue with relying on Rupture heavily in this build is that you must micromanage your positioning. Making the wrong move means you're in trouble. Null Blade is a well rounded passive, and Breakfall 3 supports your movement throughout the map. This concludes Episode 3 of our Dom Analysis series. With only two classes left to cover, let us know in the comments what we should do next. Keep up with us on Twitter, at MPC League, or visit our website at mpcleague.com. My name's Malfunction, and I'll see you in the next episode.